Technological developments in regards to literacy have been made since humans started painting things they like to eat on cave walls. From cuneiform on clay to the codex book, from the quill pen to the printing press, we have always strived to develop more effective and efficient methods to script the written word. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to divulge into one of the most commonly used writing tools today. I'll look at its origins, the social changes that it's perpetrated, how it has changed educational practices, and whether or not it has advanced the progress of mass literacy. I'm going to be looking into the word processor. Thank you for the applause. We begin our look into the word processor during the early 1960s. World War II had just recently come to an end. The Second World War had developed a heavy demand for new and innovative technologies. Examples of these can be seen with Alan Turing's machine, which helped crack the infamous Nazi Enigma code, and the ENIAC computer, which helped pave the way for the H-bomb. These were, in a sense, the world's first ever computers. These first computers, although as ingenious as they were, worked on punch cards. No keyboards, no monitors. The concept of typing text into a computer did not come about until 1962. This was when two MIT students integrated an electric typewriter into a computer. This allowed it to store text and print it as written form. Interestingly enough, it was the same machine that was used for Space Wars, which was the first ever video game. The cost? Oh boy! Ironically, this is what led to the computer's name. It was referred to as Expensive Typewriter, or ET. Great job, guys. Innovative technology needs work on the name, though. The early 70s made way for the first widely available conventional word processor. The Wang 2200, as it was called, had a monitor which allowed the presentation of 16 lines of character type with 64 characters per line. The problem? Wait. The price. The Wang cost an astonishing $7,400. And that's if you didn't even want any storage space. If you wanted storage space, that cost started at an additional $4,500. And you didn't even get a lot of storage space with that. The storage space you got was either 1, 2, or 5 megabytes. That's coming to a total of almost $12,000. That is a lot of money to, to replace something like this. To put it into perspective, the Corvette at the time cost just a little over $5,000. I think I might take the Corvette, or two Corvettes for that matter, and take the pencil as well, too. There are many instances where innovations get a push from a well-known person so that these innovations are more widely used in mainstream society. For the typewriter, this person came in the form of Mark Twain, who, in 1882, produced Life on the Mississippi on a Remington typewriter. In 1981, former President Jimmy Carter is known have published his memoirs on a $12,000 Lanier word processor. It is also known that Jimmy Carter may have been the first to have a word processing related panic when he accidentally deleted several pages of his memoirs in progress by hitting the wrong keys on his keyboard. This incident, needless to say, would not have been a great promotion for the word processor. The person who gave the word processor its first big push is made reference to by Matthew Christenbaum, an associate professor of English at the University of Maryland. He made reference to King. No, not that King. Not that one either. Definitely not that King. There you go, that one. Yes, the infamous King of Horror himself, Stephen King. Christensen makes reference to King in a lecture that was deliciously titled Stephen King's Wang. He makes note that King was one of the first mainstream writers to use a word processor in 1982. For $10,000, King bought a Wang word processor, hence the title of the lecture, and proceeded to write The Talisman. Christianbaum points out this is where the word processor begins to change literary practices. Look at the title. King co-wrote the talisman with Peter Strub. The catch? They were miles apart. King was intrigued by this ability to collaborate. They were able to share their work through a modem, a practice 
that could be only done with the use of a word processor. Christian Baum makes reference to the editing process. He acknowledges how King was fascinated with the insert and the delete button, how he was able to take text, cut it out of one area, and instantaneously input it into another. Other authors began to share these views. Novelist Joan Didion felt that using a word processor was le less like painting and more like doing a sculpture. You start with a block of something and shape it into something else. Science fiction author Joy Purnell claimed how the editing capabilities of the word processor actually improved the overall quality of writing. If one made a mistake on a typewriter, editing would become an arduous task. It was because of this that many authors were still actually using a pencil up until the 1980s, still being very tedious. It was because of this tediousness in the editing process where authors would sometimes come up with a good enough mentality in regards to their writing, just deciding to get the job done instead of focusing more on the quality. Pornell marveled that with the word processor, he would be able to revise his work over and over again, thus focusing more on the quality. As we can see, the benefits of the word processor becoming more evident in the 1980s, we begin to see changes in sociological and educational practices. This is especially seen in the office space. Prior to the 1980s, most tasks that involved typing were left to a secretary, who were almost exclusively women. They would have to take secretarial training courses prior to being hired. As the word processor became less expensive, and more prevalent in the office, the demand for employees having word processing skills increased. Businesses began to train their staff. It was also becoming the expectation that all potential employees come out of colleges and universities with a strong knowledge of word processing. This was no longer simply a secretarial skill alone. The position of the so-called secretary would transform from a position that was widely considered unskilled labor to a complex job that involved immense organizational skills as well as knowledge of spreadsheets and eventually presentation software. What effect has the word processor had on writing in greater society? I like a quote by Jay Bolter to outline this. He said, writing entails method, the intention of the writer to arrange verbal ideas in a space. If this is the case, then the word processor is a tool much like the pencil or a typewriter. It is the author that is the builder. But what a tool the word processor has become. There have been a number of studies done that show the word processor can improve the writing skills of the masses. A study done on ESL students in Greece indicated that the word processor can positively influence students' attitudes towards, the skill, towards their skills in writing in English. The study showed that the group of students who used a word processor became more confident in their, in their ability to write in English, making more revisions, improving the quality with, larger vocab with a larger vocabulary, and producing greater quantity as well, too. Natalie Beck and Tony Featherston did a study on how a word processor affected the quality of students' writing in elementary school. Beck and Featherston noticed similar results with the children as what was seen with the ASL students. Students using the word processor did not have to worry about neat handwriting. Instead, they appeared to take more risks in regards to the quality of their writing as well as the quantity. To conclude, this is what I have seen in my classroom. Coming from an elementary background, I have noticed that when my students use a pro word processor, their confidence has exploded. No more do they have to worry about the ideals of neat handwriting and perfect spelling. They can focus on the content and the message. They are confident to write in ways in which they have never thought possible. Instead of being told when to write, some are begging me to do more and I am kicking them out to go to recess so I can get a break. I'd like to think that the development of the word process that with the development of the word processor, we can be seeing many more Stephen Kings in the future. Thank you very much for watching.